Hi mamas, Carrie Biscalonis here with Mental Health Mondays. I am the founder of Reset Brain and Body located in Plymouth and Servium all throughout the state of Michigan. We provide online counseling, in-person counseling, support for kids, families, adolescents, adults. We have groups, workshops. We also have a summer camp coming this summer. So stay tuned for details about what we're doing here at Reset. You can always visit our website. But I want to talk to you today about hustle culture, leaning in, feeling like you have to do it all. You know, I am a huge fan of Glennon, and those of you that know Glennon, I'm sure love her as well. And she has this mantra, we can do hard things. And I firmly believe in that. I believe that each one of you can do hard things. But I also believe that you don't have to do all of the hard things. I want to talk to you today about leaning out, about doing less, and about letting go. So first of all, one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves is to stop comparing. I know it's hard. I know that even subconsciously, others and say, well, I'm doing more or less. I am better or worse. I have to do more or less. It's what biologically we're supposed to do in order to continue to survive. So I want you to be aware first that it's okay if you recognize that you compare a lot. But then secondly, give yourself the opportunity to filter that comparison a little bit more to objectively observe the comparison and say, wait a second, I don't want to engage in this. Because those comparisons, whether subconscious or not, are deriving more of this behavior that might be toxic for you, and then also driving you perhaps to engage in more decision making that is hurting you or continuing to make you feel less than. So however you want to engage in not comparing or comparing less, whether that is being more conscious while you're scrolling on social media, whether that is unfollowing certain accounts that make you feel just not enough, maybe not surrounding yourself by certain people that make you feel not enough. But deeper than that, and this is where I go on to second point, is that is that comparison a story? You, is it something that it's, it's not about what other people are doing to you, it's about what you're telling yourself. I have found that our need to hustle, to do more, to prove and to show this perception of ourselves more often than not comes from shame, from fear, from some sort of limiting belief that means that we're pretty hard on ourselves. So if you have a moment, take a moment, grab a piece of paper and draw an upside down triangle. You guys have heard me talk about this before. Here, I will show you an example. Upside down triangle. Okay. And in this upside down triangle, I want you at the root of the triangle to write shame. And in the upper right hand corner of this triangle, I want you to write ego. And under the ego, I want you to write all the ways in which you engage in behavior that makes you do more. So perhaps it's you're a perfectionist or you're high achieving, goal oriented. You are always busy and it feels good. You can't sit down. You are a workaholic, perhaps. But all of the ways in which you put pressure on yourself to do more, be more, show more, show up more, to lean in, to hustle, to do the hard things. And then I want you to look at the bottom of the triangle, the shame, and ask yourself, what belief do I have about myself that makes me engage in those ego behaviors? 
a lot of times we have a belief that maybe we're not good enough. Maybe we are a quitter or a failure. And so we have to prove that we, we don't give up. Maybe it's that I can't trust anyone. So I need to do everything on my own. Maybe it's that I'm the only person that I can rely on. A lot of times we have these types of beliefs because of trauma, early childhood experiences, or just the way in which we view the world and the way in which we feel like the world views us. But we have to be really cognizant about how this then impacts our need and the pressure we put on ourselves to hustle, to do the hard things, to work harder, to lean in. And this can be bigger than just your story. This can be the, how the world is telling you how to believe. You know, a lot of times we talk about where did this come from, right? This need for women to do it all and have it all. And it, it came from a really beautiful place. And that's the feminist movement that women are empowered to have choice and to start their businesses, to be free and do more. The problem is, <laughs> is that the feminist movement took off, but the patriarch didn't quite meet us there. And so what we're seeing is that more women are doing more and more, but society hasn't caught up. We still don't have paid maternity leave. We don't have men getting off as much time for having babies as women. So where's the help? Our system is not set up for women to do it all. And yet we have this pressure, this feeling of empowerment that we're supposed to do it all. And that lack of reconciliation is creating this burnout, this stress. Women are exhausted. And so not only is it important to look at your own beliefs and shames and fears, but then also the ones that were placed upon you based on where you are, where you exist within society. So once you have identified that and you can observe it, it's really important to continually notice how this shows up for you. When are you overcompensating and dropping into that ego side of the triangle? When are you doing more, putting pressure on yourself, self-criticizing, hustling harder? And is that coming out of shame or fear, criticism? Then we have to ask ourselves, what can I let go? It is impossible, truly, it really is. It really is impossible to do it all, to wake up early and exercise and meditate and journal and reflect and clean the house, do the dishes, do the laundry, get kids fed, get them out the door with no stains on their clothes, get you out the door with no stains on your clothes, meal prep, make lunches, breakfast, dinners, make the beds, vacuum, feed the dog, go to any doctor's appointments, and, and also work eight to 10 hours a day, brush your teeth, shower, clean your hair, I, I could go on and on and on. Oh, all while <laughs> looking good while doing it, looking good enough. And yet we put this pressure on ourselves. And so I want you to ask yourself like, well, okay, what can I let go of? What actually is unimportant? I remember when I was a new mom, someone told me it was a joke and I, and I tell it to myself all the time. And I would tell it to my husband too is, okay, there are three things that are going to happen by the end of the day. I'm going to have showered. I'm going to have um, cleaned the house in some way, or I will have had a meal prepared. That's it. Just, and, and just one of those is going to happen, right? So the house is going to be clean. I'm going to be clean, or there's going to be a meal on the dinner table. Just one after being with kids all day. And so I want you to just have a realistic expectation with yourself and give yourself that permission that you cannot do it all. And it's important to ask for help that goes on to step four, right? So not only to let things go, recognize, okay, this actually isn't important. I don't need to do this. This is not a priority. Ask for help. Really, really ask for help. Not only to your immediate family, but your community. Ask for help. And then step five is to consciously lean out. Unplug. Set up boundaries for yourself. Only say yes when you fully, fully mean it. 
go technology free. I took off my Apple Watch and it's been really, really nice. Take email off your phone. Lean out from the pressure to do it all and be perfect. You don't have to <laughs> have a business while raising children and being successful at everything you're doing and also be fit and be on the perfect diet and have Michelle Obama arms. Figure out where you can lean out. So this is a conversation we can continue to engage in, but the more that we support each other and saying, let that one go, that doesn't feel important right now. You don't have to keep your kids entertained all day and put them in summer camp and also make sure that they're in karate and also going to therapy every single week and also um, reading 12 books a week, <laughs> whatever the expectations are, okay? So once again, I wanna remind you, stop comparing, try to limit your comparison. Notice the shame story, notice how your behaviors are derived from a place of shame or self-limiting beliefs let things go, ask for help, and consciously lean out. Thanks for taking this time with me today.